Okay, so I made a video for <clears throat> tuning timing on GM vehicles, and uh, I figured I should make a similar one for the Dodge. Now, uh, what this is going to be is this is going to be based on my personal 5th gen uh, 2019 Ram. Um, so we're going to go to the stock file first, and we're going to go over a few things. Now, uh, as you get older and older vehicles, a lot of this stuff on these tables is going to disappear. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, part throttle base. This is regular driving around. Um, now, when you driving down the road or idling, you get on it, your vehicle is going to travel through this area here. And in most parts of the country, cut across here. Um, closer to sea level, it's going to be up higher. Cams, things like that, it's going to be up higher. Boost, it'll be way higher than 93. Um, one of the first things that I do on these is we get rid of the negative timing um, typically you'll never be in this cell um, I just keep, I personally I just get rid of it it, get, it gets in the way uh, and when you're trying to do multiplication on the table um, in large sections uh, the multiplication of negative uh, cells will actually have an opposite effect because of the negative okay so one of the other things is, is you got this bump here don't really want that bump there. It doesn't really need to be there. Um, so basically, I go like this here, kind of create a flat. Well, let's let's take a look here. Let's see if we can do this. Mm. No, nope, we're gonna do a flat section there. Most vehicles here, we're gonna give about three degrees of timing. Three degrees of timing there. We're going to copy this section here. Okay. Um, so from there, uh, there's still some bumps in here. We're going to grab the whole table. We're going to do a little bit of smoothing. Okay. This right here is going to be a decent timing table. Um, now, where the one of the most important places is where your cruise by versus where your air charge is so you need to log air charge to figure out where cruising is to figure out where you're at wide open throttle um, and things like that so one of the things is is that typically the area where you cruise so let's say 2000 rpms by let's say 30 you're going to want to be anywhere from one to four degrees higher here than stock because that's where you're going to get your best fuel mileage um, through logging is going to be the best and pretty much the only way to figure out where the best mileage is. Uh, basically, set it at 26 here, drive it on the highway at 70, see your mileage is. Set it at 20, do the same thing, set it at 28, blah, 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 uh, and go back and forth because what you're doing is you're trying to find the best fuel economy there because that's the max base timing. Uh, on the dyno is the only way that you're going to find the maximum, the best timing for max horsepower. Uh, typically on 5.7 Hemi trucks, uh, it's between 19 and about 22 and a half degrees. Um, so these numbers are actually kind of low here, uh, but you know, it's something that you have to play with yourself. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you the part throttle spark table for my personal 5th gen Hemi. Is that okay? So yeah, this yes, this is my personal fifth gen Hemi. Um, so this um, I actually do have to make some changes here a little bit, um, but let me let me see if I can pull this side by side here. I've been working on my Hemi here, um, trying to get this dialed in recently. Runs and drives great, gets great gas mileage. Um, you can kind of see the differences between the two. I really. This is kind of really the way, the best way to see it. You see how nice and smooth this is here. Well, we want this to match this, um, but uh, the part throttle table, the most important area is here. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is Dodge will actually reference part throttle and wide open throttle table when you get on it, and try to average between the two. But that's something that we'll go and do more later. Next, I get decent gas mileage on this table, uh, but I'm going to be making some changes on it after I seen kind of where it was. Uh, I didn't realize that it was kind of crappy. <laughs> uh, wide open throttle. So, 
so you can see here where we're at wide open throttle between the two um, you can see we are roughly in some places two to three degrees higher um, you can see how there's this this difference here uh, what ended up happening is that uh, a friend of mine used the vehicle and uh, he drives a lot harder than I do and um, I like to run my tunes hot because I don't beat on my vehicles very often and ended up putting a hole in the pistons so we ended up actually removing some timing um, when we put the new motor in the in just in case someone else drives the vehicle okay so let me let me let me reopen let me open a different file here okay we're gonna open up the file that it made the most file on the, on the dyno now the dyno had 30 it had 37 so it was on the dyno so it made right around 300 horse so this is what made the most power on the dyno now one of the things that you need to keep in mind is this crap here needs to go away and um, I'm not exactly sure why I didn't have it gone um, so this isn't zeroed here this was before this was like a year ago so this is before I was zeroing in this out this area here needs to get repaired because this this orange should be pretty co pretty consistent here um, you know what I mean it should be a, a when you get on it it's going to come across here and the part of the country I'm in it's going to go straight across here okay so it's just going to be going 16 to like 22 degrees out of nowhere um, so we don't want that okay this is what we I mean it's kind of good that that file was like that so I can show you uh, that just means that I'm gonna have to do some more tuning on my truck tonight you want it to be smooth that's what you need you need it to be smooth um, now the thing is is one of the other things is is you're gonna need to or here you know what let me uh, go back to this quick here um, Hemi's did I close my other one here we go barometric pressure is very important on Hemi's okay so after you get your wide open throttle and your part throttle timings tuned where you want it the next thing is you want to go to barometric pressure here okay yep this is the older file okay so this file pulls timing based on barometric pressure okay well the higher up you are the lower your barometric pressure is here the lower closer to sea level the higher the number is here okay the higher up you are the more timing your engine can take so this none of this makes sense what why this is zeroed out here it means because the vehicle is set to sea level from the factory okay so what I end up doing here is I actually have it add two degrees um, and then from here I have it take two degrees away so now the part of the country I'm in is actually right around here okay so I'm at 75 to 65 okay so what we're gonna do is we're going to make the zero section basically these three this is the part of the country I'm in we're gonna make this zero okay and we're going to make this negative one so my timing tables are going to be for where I live okay now if I go up higher in the mountains it's gonna add timing to compensate and if I go closer to sea level it's gonna take timing away uh, it's very important to do this, at least in my opinion, that way if you're driving in different areas of the country, pulling a trailer, things like that, your timing can be adjusted for that. Um, now, if you are pulling a trailer, things are a little bit different. Uh, the problem is, is putting a trailer on adds more load. More load means it's easier for spark retard. So if it's a vehicle that sees a lot of mountains, and it's got a trailer you're gonna want to probably honestly you're probably gonna pull a little bit of timing away you would rather pull a little bit of timing and save your motor keep that in mind you can make modifications based on it uh, engine coolant temperature things like that um, there's a lot that you can do uh, one of the big things people do on Hemi's is they take the NOx sensors and they desensitize them okay stay away from this it, at least until I make the the video I'm going to make a video on desensing knock sensors why to do it how to do it things like that until I make that video stay stay away from this don't just don't just do it because some forum said to do it you need to do it for the right reasons and you need to know why and how things are that way 
Um, one of the next things you need to do is I'm going to close these out and I'm going to open up the scanner. Um, I'm going to attempt to uh, kind of explain the PIDs a little bit more on the scanner for uh, the Hemis. Now, I, the Hemi, the file that I'm, I'm going to bring up probably isn't going to be a Hemi, unfortunately, but I'm just going to basically pick a... Uh, a random a random file that I have well you know what I might be able to get a hemi on here so let me let me let me try so let's do date modified okay let's try to find my Hellcat these are gonna be Hellcats in here so let's let's just find a random Hellcat file okay at least I think it's a Hellcat because October was when I had my Hellcat so we need to pick a different layout. Let's try this layout. Okay, Hellcat. Okay, um, and I'm here. We go. So what we have here is my Spark table. Obviously, is set up for RAM, so it's not populating correctly. Okay, but you're gonna go to Graph Layouts and you're gonna create a graph. You're gonna create a graph for Spark, which is your regular table. Okay, you got and. You're going to create one for for wide open throttle as well. You're going to create a retard table and a retard wide open throttle. Now, the information you're going to need, of course, I um, shut down the software. Um, you're going to go to the table. You're going to go to the table that your Spark table is. You're going to grab your RPMs that are on the top, and you're going to populate the data here. Um, all you do is right click and click copy column, copy column header, whatever. Put that in here then you're going to need your rows which for my vehicles air charge grams and you're going to copy the data there and paste in there um, you're going to want to have engine speed and air charge in here and in here so that way you can populate it you're going to do the same for spark spark wide open throttle retard retard wide open throttle now when these populate correctly, and this isn't because this is this logs for my Hellcat and this layout is for my RAM, okay? Um, you got your RPM up here and you have your air charge. So based on whatever the air charge you're driving around is and your RPM, the timing will populate, okay? Same with retired and retired wide open throttle, uh, which will help you know where to pull timing, things like that. So obviously, this tune kind of this log kind of sucked because I was just cruising at 75 down the highway. Okay, but with the proper timing, things see you get a little bit of knock retard there, right there. With the proper timing, um, an engine can get really, really good gas mileage, it can make really good power, things like that. So, you can see here. I'm guessing that we've got different changes in elevation based on the KPA. You can see my KPA keeps going up and down. I'm trying to find a, a steady KPA. So, okay, let's just say 64 to 67. So, 30 degrees of timing at 75, 1500 RPMs. Uh, my Hellcat got 30 to 32 miles per gallon. Uh, and it took me a while to get this figured out. You got to add timing, take timing away, go for a lot of drives. But in the end, it's super worth it. Um, and you can see my fuel trims here are pretty decent. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, please message me, subscribe. If you need me to go in more depth on things, let me know. Uh, I know I lose track at points, so and just end up rambling. Rant, ran, end up rambling, rambling. There you go.